On the 1st of July, I uploaded a video called About Those Wobbly Rockets, where I talked about my feelings on one of KSP2's most contentious features. I'm doing the air quotes thing as I say the word features, <laughs> since really, wobbliness has always been an issue with the way KSP1, and now KSP2, handles its joint physics. I think my thumbnail pretty succinctly covered my general feelings on the subject. Subsequently, I played Kitbash Model Club with Harvester, the original developer of KSP1, where, during our fairly lengthy discussion about the state of Kerbal Space Program 2, he acknowledged KSP1 and 2's wobble problem and showcased his own solution to the problem, confirming that it was indeed a problem and not an intended gameplay feature, and that his solution was, in very broad sweeping terms, was to just have the game treat the whole vehicle as one single rigid body, to which then physics calculations are applied, rather than the game trying to simulate all of the part joints in real time, which was the root cause of the wobble in the first place. There's no wobbliness. There's no wobbliness uh, in we... Kitbash! <laughs> We've moved on from the... Uh... So here we are. Here is me launching what I think is a fairly good replica of the SLS, but I deliberately didn't put any struts on the vertical stack itself. I only used struts to secure the SRBs to the central core, which, in my opinion, should be the only place struts are needed for this kind of vehicle anyway. As you can see, the rocket wobbles. The command pod and ICPS stand-in flex in relation to the lower stage. Okay, it is subtle, but this is a fairly small rocket compared to the kind of stuff required to do more ambitious missions than a simple nun trip. And right now, a lot of big interplanetary missions need to be launched in one go because docking stuff together in orbit to build bigger interplanetary ships results in a very flexy vehicle, which further necessitates a very large launch vehicle. So that was the problem, that was Harvester's solution, and that was the current state of the game's wobbliness. And that's all we really had. We got a handful of dev updates saying that wobbly rockets were the subject of internal discussion, but not a lot of information about where their actual plans were. My initial wobbly rocket video was spurred by the fact that Nate Simpson made a developer diary on the forums that covered wobbliness, making some fairly reasonable points, such that if you construct a literal noodle or attach a radial booster with no additional reinforcements, then some wobble should be expected. But he also stated, and I'm again going to quote directly to avoid any miscommunication, Wobbly rockets are sometimes fun and funny. A big part of what originally got many of us hooked on the original KSP was the silliness and emergent problem solving that came from playing World of Goo with rocket parts. Broadly, we see this as part of the Kerbal DNA and want to preserve it in some form." End quote. And that was what I disagreed with, and it seemed that the community overwhelmingly felt the same. I don't want to play World of Goo with rockets. If I wanted to play World of Goo, I would probably just play World of Goo. <laughs> My personal stance on Wobble is that there is literally nobody on Earth that would be enjoying a rocket ship simulation game and think, this would be more fun if the vehicle wobbled, and those that do defend it are doing so retroactively, and that if the game didn't have wobble to begin with, nobody would be asking for it. It sucks and isn't fun, and coming up with a narrative justification for it shouldn't be something to strive for. Wobble was bad in KSP1 even after Auto Strut was added. Just look at how the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement mod remains popular to this day, and didn't see much dip in popularity when Auto Strut was first implemented, and KSP2 seems to have many of the previous game's problems, and if anything, seems to lean into a lot of them. And that brings me to today, or I guess yesterday. The Kerbal Space Program YouTube channel uploaded an almost 20 minute long developer talk called Wobbly Rockets KSP2 Dev Chats. And I figured that since I was probably one of the more vocal people on the subject of Wobble, and my video seems to get thrown around whenever the subject comes up, you guys might want to hear my thoughts on this dev update. The update video was a straight video call between Nate and Dave Tregening. David has been working with Kerbal for about 10 years, starting with engineering work on KSP2. KSP1, and now with KSP2. Right away, Nate asked what David's personal answer to Wobbly Rockets was, and the answer was a bit wordy. Interestingly, he began by saying that one option would be to turn off all the joints from a technical perspective, single rigid body, apply forces, which interestingly sounds a lot like Harvester's solution in Kitbash. But he then said that in doing so, you lose some of that novelty. The scale of KSB2 and Interstellar and how big these vessels would be for a realistic or semi-realistic physics experience becomes much harder. 
Now, I'm not really sure what that means or what is meant by the word novelty, unless this is related to a continued internal belief that wobbliness is part of the Kerbal DNA and needs preserving. The conversation then continued about what you would expect in the real world. A single stack should not flex at all, something I think we can all agree with. And as Starship showed us, that's the case even with massive vehicles doing backflips in the atmosphere. This was stated as much in the video, that in the real world experience of building rockets, you would expect all of the cylindrical elements to be part of, or potentially milled out of, the same piece of metal, or at the very least welded together quite well. And there is a common sense interpretation by which the devs expect certain things to flex and certain things to be rigid. So what have they been working on? So David stated that there's been various testing about what's being developed, comparing performance with rockets in KSP-1 and KSP-2, and they've consulted with Unity engineers and looking at the physics engine itself to make sure that everything was performing as expected. But how exactly are they looking at the game to handle the joints? The conversation continued that resolving joints when forces are applied eats into the game's performance, so the team needs to find a balance for this. There's the extreme option of just disabling it all so that there's no wobble whatsoever and the whole vehicle flies rock solid like a house brick, but even I would agree that there should be some level of punishment for absurdly bad designs, or for example, radially attached boosters without a level of attachment beyond just the decoupler. KSP-1's auto strut was mentioned as a potential solution in the interview, and a widely held stance in the player base is that if there's already auto strut functionality, could there not be some sort of short term, more expedient way of reducing the wobble issue, and then the team can work on more nuanced, more scalable solutions down the road. This was addressed with the statement that the team is always needing to compromise between what has the short term utility and what is a sustainable long term solution, and that they don't view KSP-1's auto strut as a sustainable solution, but that it may be an effective solution in the short term and this is being looked into. Ultimately, the video can be summarised as part talking about what intuition would tell us about how rockets should wobble, part talking about the fact that the game developers are doing game development, and part talking about the fact that the team is still set on simulating joints. I feel that the harvester approach of just making simplifications and then modelling the entire vehicle as one body when the part count gets too high is fine. It might not be totally 100% realistic, but ultimately, KSP is a video game, and it'd be better to have it be slightly unrealistic, but more in line with what common sense would say about a rocket, better performing because the game isn't trying to model every single part joint, and crucially, there wouldn't be any wobble. The obsession with modelling every single joint is what's killing the game's performance, and I say all of this with the massive disclaimer that I am not a programmer or an engineer. I hated physics in school, in fact. <laughs> I was more into the biology side of science. But to me, it doesn't sound like this should be rocket science, dare I say? That was awful. Especially because I dread to think how the game would perform if every joint in this is being simulated. But maybe Colony Physics has its own thing entirely. Planet Coaster is a game where you build buildings and they don't wobble and it's made in Unity. Maybe you should check out my videos on it sometime. <laughs> I really think that adding something that just simplifies things, at least for now, seems like a good option. I mean, the fact that this wasn't written for KSP2 from scratch and instead the code was lifted straight from KSP1 kind of speaks for itself. I really, really don't understand the need for simulating every single joint, and let's be real, most players don't care either way, since basically everyone used auto strut in KSP1, and within days of KSP2's release, people were modifying the game files to artificially strengthen joints to much higher levels, a hack that wasn't actually mentioned in this video, curiously. Interestingly, what was mentioned in the video was how we should define wobble. What does it mean? They asked, how would you define it? Does it represent unconstrained flexibility of all joints all the time? It's a really good point because you could interpret wobbliness in different ways. And I appreciate the fact that it's being explored in depth, but at the same time, should this not have been a question that was asked six years ago when development started? The video was a straight Zoom call too. I appreciate it, of course, and I don't want to take dev time away from deving, but there was a lot of talk about tests and comparing different systems and performance of vehicles in KSP1 versus KSP2, and it would have been interesting if you could have been shown clips of this. I am glad that wobbliness is being taken seriously by the team, and it was given its own 20-minute video, but to be honest, I feel like not a lot was really said. I get it, though. KSP is ultimately owned by Take-Two Interactive, and I have no doubt what whatsoever that the devs are 
buried in NDAs that stops them from really lifting the Iron Curtain. But you know, we can all forgive the jank of KSP1 because it was an indie developed game, initially by just one guy and then by a team at a company that wasn't even a game development studio. I guess I had hoped that a fully funded publisher backed title would go in and nail the core physics engines problems, not reuse code from the previous game, and not have wobble where it shouldn't. Because no real life rocket wobbles, nobody wants vehicles to bend and flex. Yes, there should be punishment for stupid designs, but not to this level. This this is me going full armchair programmer, so this might not be possible, sorry if it isn't, but can all separate vertical stacks not just be treated as single objects with physics applied and then the joints between those vertical stacks get wobble physics that needs to be overcome with struts? Obviously that doesn't really work if someone slaps an XL size fuel tank on top of a stack of 90 extra small fuel tanks, but I'm sure there could be a way that the game can see when there's a sudden shift in part diameter and add a joint in. Uh, I don't really like speculating these sorts of things though because, again, I'm not a programmer. The video concluded with some sneak peeks of upcoming stuff, and now it's time for my own sneak peek. As you may be aware, I'll be attending Space Creator Day this October in Speyer, Germany, and guess what? So will Nate Simpson. And I'm pleased to say that I'll be having a sit down with Nate and get another chance to interview him. So expect that video later next month. The only other stuff that I know about Nate's visit will be that he'll be talking about the new content update coming to KSP2 and will show some new gameplay and provide me with some B-roll to share with you all. So I guess get hyped for that. But yeah, rocket woes in KSP2. The frustration of wobbly rockets persists. A thorn in the developer's side, an ongoing uphill battle, and, by the sounds of things, a problem that remains largely unsolved. I'll leave you with a text update to the wobbly rocket dev video written by Nate because I know that not everyone might have seen the comment. David has been developing a tool that allows the team to compare multiple wobbly rocket remedies, including selective wobbliness for certain part categories, KSP1 style auto strut for the entire vehicle, and various flavours of packed vehicle physics. We're testing these now with the goal of achieving near-term improvement in vehicle rigidity while developing a more ambitious long-term fix that's performant at all scales. We'll share more information when we've arrived at a balanced solution. We know you've waited a long time for a solution to this issue and we're excited to be closing in on a resolution.